Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial on Blender Asteroids. Today we'll be making this glowy asteroid effect, and without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's clear the scene of any clutter. Uh, let's make the shader editor smaller. And what we want to do is add in a cube, just a regular old cube at the center of the scene. And what we want to do next is add in a subdivision surface modifier, because we will be displacing this geometry later. We need a lot of it. So let's set this to round six. That seems pretty good. That seems like enough geometry. And what you want to do also is turn off use limit surface. That makes it so that the uh, subdivision surface modifier is I think around three times faster. Not entirely sure about that. I just find it quite a bit faster. Okay. So after that, what we want to do is add in a displacement node right here. Click new to make a new texture. Use this button to teleport over to here and click clouds. As we could see, this is now being displaced, but it doesn't look like an asteroid. It looks uh, a lot weirder. To make it look like an asteroid, what we need to do is set the scale to one, as we could see right here, and turn up the detail. As we could see, five or six details seems pretty good. Make sure you set the shading to smooth. And as we could see, this looks pretty much like an asteroid. We could rein in the uh, strength a little bit. I think, yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe 7.5. There we go. And now what we can do is add in a little bit of animation. Just add in a keyframe right here. At 0, 1 at the end of your animation. And set the X rotation to 360. And as we could see, there's a little bit of a problem. It speeds up and then slows down like that. We want it to be consistent so that the animation loops. And to do that, just press T and set the interpolation node uh, mode to linear. As we could see, when the animation loops, it loops perfectly. No problems, no issues. Okay, so now that we have this, let's set up the shading in the environment. So if we go in the rendered view, uh, you want your background to be absolutely black, because space is space, you usually don't get a lot of light from it. So, the one light that we do have is the sun. Let's add in a sun lamp, and rotate it a little bit so that it, the angle is something like that. Since we are an AV, we need to tweak a few settings, because EV is more like a game engine instead of a ray tracer, so uh, it's not as accurate. So to fix a few of the issues that I've run into, change the bias down to something very low. That just keeps the, uh, as you can see here, if I zoom in a bit, that the shadows aren't as accurate when the bias is higher. I'm not exactly sure why that works to make it better, but it does. Contact shadows also make it more, uh, make it quite a bit better, increases the uh, fidelity of the shadows because we can't have full resolution all the time. And yeah, that's pretty good for the scene. Maybe set the uh, strength around 4 or 5. That seems pretty good. Okay, now that we have this set up, and the asteroids rotating and all that good stuff, we could start making the shader. So add in a new material right there. Go over to here, and what we want to do first is add in a noise texture. Right here. And what we want to do next is press Ctrl T if you are using the Node Wrangler add-on. It's built in with Blender, so all you need to do is enable it and you should be good. Add in the object uh, coordinate into the mapping. And as we, uh, as we can see with that, if we scale this down and up, there are no seams. If we were to use the UV map, as we can see, there would be quite a few of them, which we don't want. So just use the object info, uh, the object coordinate. It's a bit slower because we are using a 3D texture, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, now what we want to do is hook this up to the emission strength. As we could see, as it loads up, it takes a little while to load up, and since we are an EV, the loading times will get more and more intense the more textures we use and the more bump maps and stuff. So this tutorial might get a little bloated by that. Okay, so with this we could see that... If we turn the emission color to something like blue and right here, as we can see, this is looking uh, very mediocre at best. So let's set the interpolation to ease and move all of this over a little bit. And what we need to do is add in a math node set to multiply after this to make it so that it glows even brighter. Again, we have to wait for the shader to compile. So if we do this, we start to get some glowing bits, but it doesn't look great still. 
To fix that, let's turn up the detail to something around 12 on the noise texture and turn up the roughness to something around this. That seems pretty good. I find that works pretty well, but it's still the glowing stuff. It looks good, but it could be better. And to make it look better, we could use the glowing um, math stuff that we've used in several other tutorials. What it does is make the light uh, exponentially fall off rather than just linearly like we have here, or technically the ease method. So to do that, let's use the uh, another math node set to minimum. There we go, minimum, hook that into there. And another one is set to logarithm. There we go, logarithm, minimum. Let's see, there's logarithm. Make sure you set this into the base value, which is the second one and not the top value one. Set the top to 0.999 and the minimum to that as well. And if we hook this up into there, we can see, let's see, let's load it up. We could see in just a few seconds, if we constrain this a bit more, that the FOF is much more I don't know, cinematic-like, it just looks a bit better, but it could be a little bit better if we add in another multiply node and multiply it by the original gradient. I know this is a little bit to set up, but I found that it makes incredibly crisp glowing gradients. So just do that. Let's add in a frame just to keep all this in one piece, all organized. There we go. Make sure you keep your, nor uh, your nodes organized. There we go. And if we look at this after it recompiles, we can see Boom, that's looking very, very cinematic with the fall off. There we go. Let's constrain it a little bit more. Maybe set the scale to something like three. And as we could see, the effect is working pretty well if I were to uh, be judging this. There we go, that's pretty good. And now what we can do is add in a bit of roughness on the top here using a bump map. So going to vector bump, let's hook the noise texture into that. Bring it right over here, add in some reroutes just to make it more organized again. There we go, pretty pretty well organized. So let's hook that into the normal, and as we could see, in a few seconds, in a few seconds, there we go. There's a lot more uh, bump on here, but it's way too much. So let's just turn to something like 0.1 and bring it down a little bit. That seems pretty good. It looks much more like a rock. And we could turn up the viewport um, subdivision. And yeah, that's, that seems pretty good. If it doesn't look good, I think we could do a little bit better with this one. So let's copy the noise texture down here and let's customize it without affecting the original one. So let's just wait for it to load up again. Here we go. Let's set this to the roughness down a bit and turn up the bump a bit more. There we go, that seems a little bit better. I don't know, I'm a little bit picky with how this uh, looks. I want it to be absolutely perfect. But yeah, that seems pretty good. And with that, we could also start uh, messing with the emission, making it different colors. So let's go, I'm just going to take the uh, color ramp and use the second noise texture right there, hook it into the emission color, and what we want is the blue and orange look that we had originally. So if we just wait a little bit more, there we go, we have this. So let's have one be kind of blue, and another one be rather orange. There we go, that's, that's looking pretty cool in itself. But what we want to constrain it to be more like this. There we go. That's okay, now the effect is coming together. I was a little worried for a second, but now it is looking very, very nice. Let's change the orange to be a bit more reddish. And yeah, there we go. Okay, so we are almost done with this tutorial. Now let's add in some stars in the background. To do that, it's actually extremely simple. Just add in a plane, put it in the background. Let's see, background right here. Scale it up a bit so that is uh, filling up the camera viewport. Add in a new texture, new one right here. And we are going to add in a texture Voronoi. There we go, Voronoi texture, control T once again, set the UV map right there, set it to 2D just so that is much more efficient, add in a color ramp. As we could see, we have stars in quotes, but in order to make it, them look really good, let's use an add node right there and use a color ramp to do that. The reason I added it right into there is to make the stars a little more sparse and more varied in their size. 
as we could see that's looking pretty good let's just keep that in the background right there make them quite a bit smaller just so that they're a little twinkle in the background and maybe make them a bit dimmer just so that they're very faintly in the background we could scale this up a little bit more i'm not sure if you could see it on youtube anymore my apologies if you can't but yeah that is basically the entire tutorial if you enjoyed as always make sure to like subscribe all that good stuff make sure you check out my gumroad page there's a lot of free and paid stuff on there look at my twitter page there's all my new projects and maybe upcoming tutorials on there and yeah i will see you in the next tutorial